Today is Sunday, which means the supermarket shut at 4 p.m. But you're gonna be proud of me, guys, because I have got up and got organized in time to make it before they close. So the purpose of today's journey, well, on Tuesday, I need to be in Birmingham to pick up my new kitchen unit. And I know that's in two days time, but I've got nothing else to do. So I thought, why not jump in a van and take two days to get to Birmingham? Today, I'm gonna to go about a third of the way, tomorrow about two thirds of the way. Then we'll arrive in the Mingham of Burr on Tuesday lunchtime without being in a rush ready to collect the kitchen. You will also be pleased to know that I already have a location in mind for once, so we're not just gonna be aimlessly driving across the country like usual. It is a delightful, quaint park up nestled in the hills in, well, to be honest, I don't know where the hell it is, but it's somewhere we are apparently zero minutes away, so we should be spotting the location any second now. There's just fields of sheep all around me. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. There's some cars. Oh no, is it well busy? It is a nice view. I mean, what I'm gonna do is just rock up here for a minute facing forwards. I didn't come across a single other vehicle on that road, but as I was driving up here, I did notice that the dark clouds were closing in. And would you believe it, just as I say that, the rain starts coming down. But you know what, I don't actually mind it. I'm gonna sit here for 20 minutes and just enjoy watching the storm. Hopefully it will pass because I do wanna get out of the vehicle at some point. The rain is still coming down and according to my phone, it's gonna be like this all night. So I've just rocked up in the back here. The other cars have left. There's still one over there and there's another one behind me over there. I was hoping to fly the drone this evening, but as you can see, it's not the best of ideas, but hopefully in the morning we'll get a chance to do that and the sun will come out. But for now, I'm going to get back in the van and show you guys what I've been working on. You might have already spotted it, but I now have some wall panels. So first of all, I've got these at either end of the bed. So these are like quilted, padded, suede sort of material that I've put onto the plywood. I've also carpeted the pillars down the middle here. I've left up the top for now because there's things going on up there, but we'll get to that another day. And then the main panel, my favorite piece. So this is high quality vegan leather, which means that no cows were harmed in the process of this build. And I get to have a luxury looking wall so I can pretend that I'm inside a Bentley. I'm not 100% sure what to do with this door yet because obviously I wanna frame out the window. I'm not sure whether to have a blind or a curtain or what's going on, but I do need to do that as my very next job because in a few days my kitchen will be going here and once that's in place I won't be able to access this door as easily so I need to get a move on and get that sorted now and finally outside of the vat what outside what this cannot be good news right that opens from outside that's shut. Oh no! Oh no! I'm getting footprints everywhere! First things first, let's get this cleaned up. And second thing second, I was about to show you, a mate of mine a couple days ago has fitted some new security plate things to all the door handles. In fact, that's obviously when it's gone wrong. It was like two days ago he's done that. So fingers crossed it's just something that's come loose from when he had to undo it all and put it back together. Wait a second. I've had an idea. There's a rainbow out there, right? Apparently there's gold at the end of the rainbow. If we line it up to about there, then hopefully the gold will work its magic and the door will open. Why? I've just texted my mate to see if he knows what's happened, but I've had a little look myself and I think I've figured it out. See, when I used to pull the handle, that never happened. That thing in there didn't move down. But as you pull it down, that rod is moving with it and I think that rod's supposed to be stuck down somewhere. There's a little ball on the end of it, which I'm assuming goes into a socket. And to get to that bit to sort it out, I'm assuming I have to remove this whole lever, which is an issue because I've got no tools with me. I might go and get some tomorrow or I might just put up with it and wait till I get home because I'm pretty sure now that I know how to fix it. 
so there's no need to stress. On a more positive note, the sun has returned. So let me show you what I was gonna show you. They're quite subtle, but behind the door handles, I now have these black metal plates. The main part of it is this lower piece here. Now it's common knowledge amongst van thieves, but basically with a Ducato, the relay and a the boxer, there's a major flaw. And that is that all it takes to get into these things is you can pop a screwdriver underneath the door handle, wiggle it about the place and the door just opens up as simple as that. But the metal plate just seals up the gap at the bottom of the handle there so they can't physically get the screwdriver in in the first place. And it's a pretty solid piece of metal but even if they bend that out of the way and get past it, there's another bit inside the door which is like a little metal bracket and that's going to stop the screwdriver getting up to the lock mechanism. And since we've once again been blessed with a blue summer sky, it's a good time to show you the last new thing which I have in the van. And that is my new portable aircon unit. This is the EcoFlow Wave 2 and it can be used in many ways. Now the main mode is the aircon mode, but it also has a heating mode and a fan mode as well. It has a plug already attached to it so it can be run from the mains or if you really want it to be portable, you can get a battery for it that clips into the bottom and becomes the base and then you can run it completely off grid. And in fact, in the eco mode with the battery alone, this thing can run up to eight hours long. So I've been keeping track of the temperatures in the van this week and as you can see, it actually got up to, what was that, 45.9 degrees in the van on a day which wasn't even like a heat wave. And the lowest peak, which was on, I think, Wednesday, it was 29.2 degrees inside the van. So on the maximum mode, it brought the temperature down from about 35 degrees to about 25 degrees in just over half an hour. Now, you've got to remember that the max mode isn't going to last forever. I think it runs for about two hours on that mode, unless, of course, you're on electric hookup or something like that and you can plug it in. But even when I've done another test on the eco mode, it actually dropped the temperature by about five or six degrees in about 45 minutes. But even just that drop of about five or six degrees, if it's that hot that you can't get to sleep at night, sometimes that's all you need. And trust me, you're gonna be grateful for it. And if you are planning on checking this out or any of their other products, now is the time to do it because they've got the summer sale on. Plus with my link and discount code that's in the description, you're gonna be able to get an extra 5% off of the already discounted price. It looks like storms are brewing again out there so there's only one thing for it dinner you might remember last week's episode where the dinner was a little bit of a failure basically i wanted tuna sweet corn and mayonnaise on some sort of bagel pizza extraordinaire but what i ended up with was cheese on a bit of bread because the tuna oh it's disgusting i'm not even gonna go there but today we are trying again because i found the tuna mayonnaise and sweet corn pre-mixed but this time it was in a see-through container so I could check it for pure evil before I bought it. I've also got brioche bagels, which I didn't know existed. So that's gonna add to the pure joy. And then I guess we just start smearing this on, do we? Why that'll do. On goes the grated mozzarella. It's a nice covering for all of them. See, this is another extreme luxury feature of my van. Right, there's light on the preparation area, but there's no light over the air fryer. What are we gonna do about that, you might ask? Well, we're going to do that. And these are now ready to go. Kind of rain's coming down again out there. And I don't know if you can see, but we have a... Oh no, I thought it was a VW. It's a Mercedes Vito. Oh, Gordon Ramsay lives in my soul. Let's see if these taste as good as they look. Oh, they taste like... Jamie Oliver's shampoo. All right, guys, I'm gonna plot up in bed. Actually, to be honest with you, I mean, these are good, but I think brioche bagels are not the one. I think normal bagels are better. I'm gonna enjoy these, plot up in bed for a little bit, look out the back window at the sunset and the impending doom that is in the clouds. Oh, Delia Smith's flannel. I've shut up shop for the evening and it is time to start winding down. Do you remember last time when I shined my projector onto the bedsheet, which is currently my side window curtain, and that accidentally created 
a full-on cinema effect for anybody outside to freely witness. So then I changed it and I put it onto this curtain at the front here, which is supposed to be a blackout curtain. Now I think it is because it does a good job of blacking out the light in the morning, but I've not actually tested it yet to see whether or not you can see the projector shining on it from the outside of the van. Let's stick that on the bed for now. We got good signal. Let's just find something random on here to watch. We'll switch this main light out. Let's go and rate the stealth factor. Oh, why? All right, we're gonna have to go out through the front again. If we can see anything out this way. There's my torch, here we go. The moment of truth. Hold on, let's turn the old torch off. That is aimed at the van right in front there and you can't see a thing. Do you know what? It's so peaceful out here tonight. It is real quiet. Like Ever since I've been sat inside the van, I've not heard a single thing. I think one car came past and that was it. I am going to get into bed, watch a couple of things and get me some sleep. Do you know what? I think tonight is going to be the most peaceful night's sleep I've ever had in this van. I don't know why it's so quiet. I've got a neighbour over there and there's about 50,000 sheep knocking about outside, but I literally cannot hear a thing. In fact, maybe I've gone deaf. Wait, hold on a second. Somebody say something quickly. And I wouldn't be able to hear you anyway, would I? Hmm. Authority of the, the telephone call out of the last video. But the long and short of it is the oil pump failed. We lost all oil pressure because the van was on the A track in the morning. Good morning, people. How are you doing? I'm aware that I look half asleep, but my prediction couldn't have been closer to the truth. Honestly, the most comfortable and quietest night's sleep I've ever had in a van. I've gone and topped my personal best. According to my phone, it is 14 degrees outside, so it's not majorly hot. Inside the van is 27.1 degrees. I mean, again, that's not like a majorly hot temperature, but imagine when it gets to like 20 degrees outside today, it's gonna be 35, 40 in here, which is ridiculous. And I don't know how well you can see that, but basically the graph shows that it's on a rapid incline as well. Like I have to work in here today, for example. I've got to sit in here on the laptop for a couple of hours, and I'm just not gonna be able to do that. So hopefully the aircon will fix my life because I can have that thing running the entire time on max when I'm doing my work. I can report that I am loving my new bed boards. If your feet happen to nip out the bottom of the covers and get a little touch, it's like you're stepping inside an inside out rabbit. Let's let some of the outside world in. Oh, look at it. Oh, why? I'm here funny, mate, but nobody said you can come in here. Get the hell out of here. Yes, you did witness that correctly, Horlicks. I was planning on mixing it with coffee and creating some sort of genius morning drink, but I forgot to bring any coffee, so I'm having just Horlicks and I've got no caffeine. I've got all my cameras ready to offload the footage onto my laptop, so I'm gonna start editing this video together Enjoy my delicious breakfast, hopefully delicious breakfast, whilst having the EcoFlow running the whole time. Now, this is just being vented outside and I've got those curtains down just so that I don't get any excess heat coming in from the cab. And I've also got the bed sheets here just so that I don't lose any of the cool air underneath the bed. It should come straight out of this vent and up towards me. The current temperature is 25.6 degrees. And I'll check back in with you guys in a little while to see how this thing has done. All right, let's whack this on max. Gosh, she is a breeze. Oh, why? 
I've had it running for about an hour or something like that. It's taken 50% of the battery and it's been in max mode and it's taken the temperature down to 18.6 degrees. So that's a drop of seven degrees roughly in total. In my test the other day, it did take it down by 10 degrees, but that was sort of more in the evening when the temperature outside was more steady. Right now, the temperature outside is heating up. So basically that unit is having to battle against the sun. So if you want to check it out, I will stick that link below with the discount code as well. As for me, I'm gonna go find a gym, have a quick shower, get changed and freshen up. Then I'm gonna start heading up towards Birmingham so I can pick up this kitchen unit in the morning. I'm gonna tonight probably film, I don't know what, maybe a supermarket stealth camp. I'm feeling being sneaky is on the cards. As always, I just wanna say a massive thank you to anybody who's donated to the channel by buying me a brain cell through the link in the description below. So for me and the exquisite pigeon, I hope you've enjoyed this one and I'll catch you next time.